Hello, everybody. How you doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Morrow's Algebra class. Today we're going to continue with the basics, and we're going to be talking about integer operations. Integers, if you remember from yesterday's lesson, classifying real numbers, integers are the whole numbers and their opposites. Integers do not include decimals or fractions. However, I wanted to let you know that the rules we're going to learn today work not only for integers, but any positive or negative real number. So even if I have negative 5 sixths plus 2 thirds, we're going to add those a little bit differently than integers, but the sign procedures, the procedures of the positive or negative signs, those are going to stay the same. So without further ado, let's go ahead and knock it out. We must realize that when numbers or and or variables are being combined via plus or minus signs, they are always being added, really. When you learned back in grade school 7 minus 6, what you were really learning was 7 plus a negative 6, which equals 1. Okay? So you're really, when you're combining um, values using addition and subtraction, you're really just adding. Therefore, there are some rules which allow you to use the negative sign correctly. Before we get into the rules, I do want to mention something called absolute value. Absolute value is the distance from zero. Absolute value is always positive and is represented by the symbol shown right here. Okay? And why is it always zero? Well, if I've got a number line here, and let's say I've got a 3 and a negative 3, here's negative 2, here's negative 1, here's 1, and here's 2. How far away is negative 3 from zero? Well, that's going to be one, two, three places from zero. And how far away is three from zero? Well, that's going to be one, two, three places from zero as well. So the absolute value of negative three is three. And the absolute value of three is also three. And it is simply the distance from zero. All right. So let's get on this. We're going to talk about rules for integer operations, addition, and subtraction. Number one, when the signs are the same, simply add the given values and keep the same sign. So when the signs are the same, add and keep the sign. When the signs are the same, add and keep the sign. When the signs are the same, add and keep the sign. Let's look at some examples. I got 4 plus 7. That's a positive 4 and a positive 7. So that's going to come out to be 11. Negative 8 plus a negative 5. 8 is negative. 5 is negative. How can you tell? Well, when you look at a number, look at uh, the sign that's directly to its left. That will indicate what kind of a number it is. In this case, this is negative 8 because the negative is clearly in front of the 8. And then you have plus a negative 5. Well, Look at the sign immediately to the left of that number. Not the plus sign. The plus sign is separating the two values. So rather, look at the sign, the sign immediately to the left of the value. And in this case, we have a negative 5. So you have a negative 8 plus a negative 5. When the signs are the same, you add and keep the sign negative 13. Negative 2 minus 7. What this is really saying is negative 2 plus a negative 7. The sign of the 2 is negative. The sign of the 7 is negative. When the signs are the same, you add and keep the sign. So negative 9. 8 plus 19. 8 is positive. 19 is positive. When the signs are the same, you add and keep the sign. So 8 plus 19 is 27. Negative 6 minus 12. Again, please remember that this is negative 6 plus a negative 12. The sign of the 6 is negative. The sign of the 12 is negative. So when the signs are the same, you add and keep the sign. So that would be negative 18. Okay? Let's continue here. Let's look at 
the second rule. Number two, when the signs are different, that means opposite. One's positive, one's negative. Simply subtract as normal. And when we subtract as normal, remember, please, it's the large value minus the small value. And keep the sign of the largest absolute value. So when the signs are different, subtract as normal, large value minus small value, and keep the sign of the largest absolute value. So when the signs are different, subtract as normal, and keep the sign of the largest absolute value. For example, 4 minus 6, what this is really saying is 4 plus a negative 6. The sign of the 4 is positive, the sign of the 6 is negative. When the signs are opposite, subtract as normal and keep the sign of the largest absolute value. So subtracting normally here, 6 minus 4 is 2. But there are more negatives than positives, so that's going to be a negative 2. B, 6 minus 11 really is 6 plus a negative 11. So the signs are opposite. When the signs are opposite, subtract as normal and keep the sign of the largest absolute value. So 11 minus 6 is 5, but I have more negatives than positives. So this is going to be negative 5. 8 minus 5. Well, 8 minus 5. This is really just saying 8 plus a negative 5. The signs are opposite. Subtract as normal. Keep the sign of the largest absolute value. So 8 minus 5 is 3, and there's more positives than negatives, so it's positive 3. 11 minus 20 really reads 11 plus a negative 20. And the signs are opposite. When the signs are opposite, you subtract and keep the sign of the largest absolute value. So we subtract as normal. 20 minus 11 is 9. But... 20 has more negatives. That has a larger absolute value, so it will be negative 9 is your answer. And 16 minus 10, remember that's just 16 plus a negative 10. Subtract as normal. Keep the sign of the largest absolute value. 16 minus 10 is 6. 16 has the larger absolute value, so it is positive 6, and you are golden. Nice and easy. All right, let us continue now. The special case. Sometimes, when you are subtracting a negative number, the two negatives multiply together and become an addition problem. When you multiply a negative times a negative, it becomes a positive. When you have this like this, and you see something like this here, Let's think about this. This negative out here is really a negative 1 being multiplied to this negative 8. So a negative times a negative is a positive. We'll see that in the next slide. But that's why this rule works. Okay? So this would be positive 8. So whenever you are subtracting a negative, you must combine those negatives together to, to make it a positive. So... I've got negative 6 minus negative 15. First thing I'm going to do, I've got negative 6. Well, a negative times a negative, that becomes positive. So now I've got negative 6 plus 15. Subtract is normal because the signs are opposite. 15 minus 6 is going to be 9. And it's positive because I have the largest absolute value belongs to 15, which is positive. So the answer is positive. 8 minus a negative 3. I'm going to rewrite this as 8 plus 3, because a negative times a negative is a positive. 8 plus 3 is 11. The signs are the same. Keep uh, Add and keep the sign. 12 minus a negative 9. So it's going to be 12 plus 9. 12 plus 9. Sign of 12 is positive. The sign of 9 is positive. 12 plus 9 is 21. Negative 7 minus a negative 7. Well, I've got negative 7, but a negative times a negative is a positive. So I've got negative 7 plus 7. The signs are opposite. You subtract as normal. Keep the sign of the largest absolute value. Negative 7 plus 7 is 0. 14 minus negative 4. Well, 
I've got 14, and a negative times a negative is a positive. 14 plus 4 is 18. Why? When the sign to the same, you add and keep the sign. Hope this is all starting to make sense. Let's move on. Rules for integer operations. Mul multiplication and division. The rules for multiplication and division, the good news is that they're the same. So let's look at it. Multiplication. A negative times a negative, we just finished seeing that. We just, if you remember, we just saw that right here in the special cases. Whenever you're subtracting a negative, okay, you've got to turn that into a positive because you're really multiplying those negatives. So, the rules for multiplication and division are as follows. A negative times a negative is a positive. So, for example, negative 3 times negative 2 would be positive 6. A negative times a positive is a negative. So, negative 3 times positive 2 is negative 6. And a positive times a positive is a positive. So, 4 times 5, they're both positive, is positive 20. Division, same rules. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. So, negative 10 divided by negative 5 is a positive 2. Negative divided by a positive is a negative. So, negative, divided, negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. And last but not least, a positive divided by a positive is a positive. So, 10 divided by 5 is positive 2. The multiplication and division rules are really simple straightforward, but you must memorize them, please. Okay, let's practice together. Perform the indicated operations, my friends. Let's see what we got. 8 minus 12. Well, 8 is positive, 12 is negative. So the signs are opposite. What they're really asking me here is 8 plus a negative 12. When the signs are opposite, you subtract as normal and keep the sign of the largest absolute value. 12 minus 8 is 4. I've got more negatives than positives. I've got a higher absolute value with a negative 12. So my answer is negative 4. Negative 12 minus a negative 5. Well, I've got a negative and a negative here. So I'm going to rewrite this. Negative 12 plus 5. Negative 12 plus 5. Now I have opposite signs. When you're combining integers with opposite signs, you subtract as normal and keep the sign of the largest absolute value. So negative 12 plus 5, they're different signs, so I'm going to subtract. 12 minus 5 is 7, but I've got more negatives than positives, so my answer is negative 7. Negative 2 times 5, negative 2 times 5, negative times a positive is a negative, so that's going to equal negative 10. Negative 8 times negative 3, Sine of the 8 is negative. Sine of the 3 is negative. And they're being multiplied. How do you know? Well, do you have a plus sign in between? The answer is no. Do you have a minus sign in between? The answer is no. When you have a variable next to a variable, or when you have parentheses next to a parentheses, or you have a number next to a variable with no plus or minus signs in between, you are talking about multiplication. So this is a negative times a negative, which is 24. And again, if you have 8x, they're being multiplied. If you have 8 plus x, they're being added. If you have 8 times 4, that's a multiplication. Addition would be 8 plus a 4. There's always going to be something in between the numbers when they're being added or subtracted. 11 minus 15. That's a subtraction. How do I see that a multiplication? 11 times a negative 15, maybe. So if you do not have anything in between the parentheses or the variable and the number, they're being multiplied. Negative 20 divided by 5. So, um, negative divided by a positive is a negative, so that's going to be negative 4. And last but not least, 48 divided by negative 16, a positive divided by a negative is a negative, so that would be negative 3. 
I hope you all enjoyed the lesson. I hope you learned a lot. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.